Once you've understood how the basic logical operators work, and we can work out the truth tables for a single logic gate, then the obvious next step is to start combining them into small circuits and working out the truth tables for these larger constructions. So what am I talking about? Well, how about a situation like this, where I want to connect an AND gate with a NOT gate? Well, circuit-wise, I'd end up with something like this, where we take the inputs A and B and plug the output from the AND gate straight into that NOT gate, and we get our final output from the other side. Now, as an aside, this is a commonly used circuit, so common, in fact, that it's got its own name, a NAND gate, as in NOT AND, NAND. Yeah, not the most exciting name ever given to something in computer science, but hey-ho, you may actually never see the circuit diagram in an exam situation. You're much more likely to see it written as an expression in either the full way or using the symbols. Notice that we're using brackets here much in the same way we do in maths, with bid mass, to suggest that the AND is done first, then the NOT. Uh, in symbology, we have to infer that order of operations, uh, but I'll get into that a little bit later. So how do we go about combining them into a truth table? Well, thankfully, we'll often be provided with a template truth table to complete that has columns for the in-between stages and the inputs already filled in. If this is the case, we just work through the columns one at a time from left to right. Just do think a little bit about how many different inputs you'll be dealing with and try and use the column values you've worked out rather than working out every single thing every single time from first principles. That's a lot of talking to explain something that's a lot easier if I just show you. This is what the truth table would look like for the NOT AND gate combination. Notice that we've got the standard values for A and B on the left, and that's because there are only two inputs, but then we've got a column for the AND gate, and then a column for the overall expression. A lot of people freak out at this because it's not immediately clear how to calculate the final column from the rest. But let's take a look. We'll start by working out the next blank column. This is an AND operator for A and B, so it's just the bog standard AND gate truth table. We can work it out again if you'd like, but honestly, I can't be bothered to animate that. If you need a refresher, go back to the first video and get the views up on that for me. Let's get this channel monetized. Kurt Ching. Hmm. Anyway, with the AND column calculated, let's get on to that final column. Now, the trick here is that we've just finished working out A and B. We have a column full of the results. If we look at that final expression a bit closer, it's asking us to apply a NOT gate to the result of A and B, which we've already worked out. This then becomes an easy job. It doesn't even require the first two columns, so let's hide them. You can get the same effect in the exam by just sticking your hand over the ones you don't need to hide them, uh, but I've got the world of animation tools at my disposal. To calculate NOT A and B, all we need to do is to apply NOT to each of these values in this column. You'll remember that NOT inverts the result so that 1s become zeros and zeros become 1s, so let's whip through that and get that in. 0 becomes 1, another 0 becomes 1, uh, yet again this 0 also becomes 1, and then 1 becomes a 0, and voila, we've smashed it. It seems straightforward, and honestly, it really is, but depending on how they write the logical expressions will change the way that you are meant to read them. As I said before, there is an order of operations, much like bid mass in maths. But ours doesn't have quite the same catchy acronym. BNAX, BNOX, BNAUX is how we define our order of precedence, meaning that you'll need to work out brackets first, then the nots, ands, ors, and xors. Mostly this won't be a problem for you, as the kinds of questions you're usually asked will gift you the truth table to fill in already in the right order. But just in case, you know that you can whip out BNAUX and apply it like you would bid mass. Curse the mathematicians for taking all the good order of operation acronyms. <sighs> Let's take a look at another combination and see if we can work through it. Ah, I've been a bit sneaky here and combined AND and an OR gate. Seems simple enough until you realize that they both require two inputs. 
So even after we set it up so that the output from the AND gate is plugged into the OR gate, that still leaves us with three different manually controlled inputs. Ugh, so what's this truth table going to look like then? Well, rather than jump straight into the full version, let's tackle it step by step. Firstly, let's just deal with the AND gate, which is just as simple as the last time. Now, as we've already calculated the expression in yellow, we only need to look at the yellow column's results and the C column. Uh, hold on, where's the C column? Oh, let's add it in. What are the values C can be? Well, 1 and 0. But, as this is a manually controlled value, we need a bit more room in this truth table because we need to see what happens to the outputs when C is 0 and when C is 1. What happens to this big empty bit on the bottom left? Well, luckily, that's just our A and B truth table again, so we can just copy that down here. Now, we've set it up so we have all possible inputs, every combination of A and B when C is off, and every combination of A and B when C is on. Let's hide those A and B columns because we don't need them to work out this last column. What I'm going to do is go down a row at a time and only put a 1 in the box if either value is a 1. Otherwise, it'll, I'll stick in a 0 because that's what the OR gate does. So, no 1s here giving us 0. 0 again and again. Aha, here we have a 1. So the OR gives us a 1 as the output. There's a 1 here too. And here and here. And both of them are one here, so this being an OR gate means we get a one out of that too. So there you have it, relatively straightforward really, and most of the time you'll have a pre-printed table just to work through. All you really need to do is take one column at a time, work out which columns you need to be looking at, and consistently apply the gate you're working on to the data you're presented with. Our next step will be to tackle a few past paper questions, just to see all the different ways this can go. But that's pretty much it for using the gates at this level. The next big push will be to learn some rules that allow us to take a Boolean expression and simplify it down. Uh, that's actually pretty satisfying if you can do it correctly. Now don't forget to like and subscribe. Please don't worry about that bell icon thing though, seriously. I don't think anyone's going to be sitting by their phone desperate for a notification from my channel. Uh, but it would be nice to build things up a bit with a few more subscribers. Tell your friends!